Hi all. I'm delighted many of you enjoy the Capablanca Backfire series. Uh, let's have a look at another type of backfire. This time Capablanca playing with the black pieces. We're going to see how a pin can backfire. His opponent was Albert Pulvermasher. Uh, this was played in New York 1907. So we have e4 from Albert and Capablanca plays e5 and we have the King's Gambit believe it or not f4. Well the King's Gambit was still popular at this time in any case. Bishop c5 from Capablanca. So here uh, let's put on a kibitza actually. There will be an immediate disaster I think if f takes e5 with Queen h4 check this is to be avoided because of g3 Queen takes e4 check and we're winning that rook. So White has to be careful here. He plays actually knight f3 and he's got the idea that he wants to perhaps castle kingside one day but he has to maybe put a barrier to this bishop with c3 and d4. We see Capablanca playing now just d6 not minding again about losing the pawn here. Let's have a quick look at this. If taking, taking knight takes e5 here is just bad again because of queen h4 check and then queen takes e4 check and we're again winning the rook. So again it can't be taken there. Uh, so we see actually after d6 the move c3. So white is interested in obstructing the bishop. Now we see a pin from Capablanca bishop g4 to the queen. White now plays f takes e5 and after d takes e5 plays queen a4 check which does break that pin. It means the knight is free to take this pawn. Has Kappa blundered? Well, I think he just was looking for strong dynamic compensation against his opponent. And perhaps best technically is bishop d7, but he just carried on developing his other pieces with knight d7. And white now took the pawn on e5, which, although technically is best, might start making the position a little bit more difficult to play from a human perspective. Now here Capablanca actually plays knight g f6 and technically white does have uh, potentially an advantage. Perhaps best was actually uh, queen g5 here to try and test white but uh, that's another story. We have um, knight g f6. White played now one of the strongest moves in the position simply d4 here. So he's got that useful pin on d7 at the moment and he's got the option to take out the bishop on g4. Now Capablanca just castled here and this is a very very critical position which has been commented uh, by quite a few people on chessgames.com as being potentially unsound for black. Uh, there's a very very interesting continuation here which technically at least initially offers white an advantage just to take on g4 here knight takes g4 and although black has dangerous threats here to retreat the queen uh, to hit the knight and it get, can get quite complicated and this is beyond the scope of the video actually. Uh, with technology now I've, this, there's an interesting variation with knight d f6 and we have some chaos potentially in, in these variations with knight gf2 here. So it seems black has some sort of raging initiative in the position which uh, perhaps wasn't appreciated um, at the time of the kibitzes uh, a few years back but it seems uh, black might actually have enough to be equal in these kind of scenarios. These are very very technical scenarios which show that really uh, you know engine analysis at the time might appear to, to show Capablanca's play unsound for knight takes g4 and queen d1 but, but actually there's a, even deeper resources in the position to be discovered later on. Here though uh, Capablanca wasn't tested with knight takes g4. We see a pin bishop g5 and here is where this pin backfired. Black now played an ingenious move in the position. Capablanca played knight takes e5 and it seems whatever way white takes there's a problem here. Uh, let's consider for example d takes uh, c5. 
Knight d3 check is very strong because it gains access potentially to the e2 square for mating. So if bishop takes, queen takes, we're threatening mate on e2. And white would have to give up the queen. Uh, if, if the king moves out of the way, I think it's just basically a forced mate. So like this, it's uh, it's going to be a forced mate pretty soon with queen h3 or queen g3 on the horizon if h3. So this is an absolutely crushing uh, position after d, d takes um, uh, c5. Now if bishop takes f6, then queen takes f6 is crushing, leaving both pieces hanging here. And you know what does what does white do here? If d takes, then queen f2 is mate. If d takes c5 now, oh, that was d takes e5, then queen f4 is crushing with the threat of queen e3. If queen d4, rook f d8. And again, white is just having to lose his queen here to fend off the, the numerous threats. If the queen didn't go in front there, you know, then then this this is devastating queen e3 check with mate to follow on e2. So this is an absolutely crushing move it seems. Knight takes e5 uh, for d takes c5 or bishop takes f6. Uh, you might think well is there any other alternatives? Queen c2? Queen c2 black could actually just kick that bishop now and if bishop h4 knight g6 gaining a critical tempo on the bishop. So that doesn't really help matters and you might think well taking here and then taking on c5. Well here it's just very very strong again rook a d8 we're looking at d1. So why it's got development issues here which just cannot be resolved that easily. Here just knight f4 is, is really strong. So very very tricky position has emerged after knight takes e5. White now tries to exploit his pin by playing actually d takes e5 and okay the queen's covering d1 here but can you guess what Capablanca played in this position which made the pin totally backfire. So if I give you 10 seconds here what would you play with black? You might want to pause the video. Okay, Capablanca played knight takes e4, and this is the final move of the game. White resigns here. Let's have a look why. Well, if queen takes e4, that deflects the queen away from d1, the weakness of the last move. Queen d1 is actually mate. If bishop takes d8, then actually we have bishop f2 checkmate. The two bishops are controlling all the squares there. So, what can actually white do here? The bishops attacked by two pieces. Uh, if it moves back to parry f2, this is hopeless. Just taking here again doesn't matter about um, uh, the knight here because we've still got that queen d1 mate. So it's actually uh, a fairly hopeless position after the knight takes e4. Uh, bishop e2. We will just basically just take that bishop. It's absolutely hopeless. If queen takes e4 here, then queen c1 check is actually forcing mate after bishop d1, queen takes d1. So all these variations just point white's actually had it after knight takes e4. The pins uh, backfired totally. A very interesting game from Capablanca, playing dynamically uh, against the king's gambit as if he didn't really care about um, losing a pawn or even uh, this, this knight takes g4 business. But it seems uh, black has resources. Uh, we just need to have the technology to find them if we're going to do a proper uh, post mortem analysis. But uh, the game ended rather briefly then after the knight takes e4 on move 10. Hope you enjoyed it. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.